Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday. So what I've got on the bench this week is a snap-on hammer. It's a BH232, made in the good old USA. And uh, I picked this up at a yard sale uh, four or five years ago for a couple bucks. Um, it's a pretty nice hammer. It's got a uh, nice rubber grip, fiberglass shaft. Uh, this is aluminum up here, and it's a soft blow hammer, but unfortunately it's not really a soft blow hammer anymore. And, you know, again, I'm not complaining for the couple of bucks I paid for it. Uh, but uh, this guy over here is still kind of soft, but every time I hit something with it, parts of it come off. Sometimes they get stuck actually in what I'm hammering. And this side is set up like a brick. Uh, it's not soft at all anymore. And uh, what I realized a couple days ago is that these guys actually unscrew. Both sides unscrew. What, uh, the reason I realized that is this side, because it's, uh, it's set up so hard and shrunk, it was actually, there was a gap here. Uh, on that side. And I thought, huh, I wonder if these unscrew. And sure enough, they do. I'll take this one off. And you can see this is, uh, this is solid aluminum here. Uh, they might have machined this surface out here, but we can see it looks like just raw casting in here. And there's somewhat like of a bevel or a slope uh, on this face here to, I think, keep it centered. And the load from the front here goes to this back part and transfers into uh, the aluminum casting. Uh, and I think this one actually sits perfectly, when I screw it all the way in, there's no gap here. It sits so that the, the force is transferred uh, both on this face and at the edge. And when I realized that these were threaded in, I thought, oh, cool, I can buy replacements. Uh, I didn't bother looking at the Snap-on branded ones, as a Snap-on tends to be quite expensive. But I found third-party ones ranging anywhere between about 15 bucks on the low end um, to like 160 30 some dollars on the high end for some specific type of plastic. I, I don't remember what type of plastic it was, but I thought, hey, I'm pretty sure I could just 3D print these guys. And uh, initially I thought about trying to do the whole thing, thread included, and I thought, well, you know what, even with that force transferring pretty well um, from the front to the rear face, there's still some shock load and eventually these threads are gonna break. And yeah, it's, you know, this is probably gonna be 25 cents in plastic or TPU to print one of these. Um, but it's going to be annoying if, you know, every fourth or fifth time I go to use it, it breaks. Uh, but I look through my drawer, and I've got a carriage bolt that is the same thread as these guys. This thread's in. Um, and there's plenty of thread here for me to, you know, cut this into a couple different pieces on my bandsaw uh, and make my own heads. So let's give that a shot. What I'm thinking is, let's do PLA on one side and TPU on the other. Uh, the PLA I'll print almost full density, so it's a nice hard face uh, that is easily replaceable uh, when I wear it out. And the TPU side, I'm gonna try and get it as soft as possible. Neither side of this hammer, uh, at least with these guys, is even remotely soft. I'm, I'm thinking like truly soft, where the head actually, um, you know, sort of changes shape to accommodate whatever surface I'm, I'm, I'm hitting. Um, you know, not like a really, really soft rubber, but soft enough that even if I'm not lined up real straight, um, I'm not gonna put any edge marks into whatever it is I'm hitting, that it's gonna, the, the head itself is gonna deform to accommodate the, the face that I'm hitting. So I think this is gonna be pretty easy to, uh, to model. Uh, it's, it looks like this is uh, perfectly straight up to this point, um, and then there's a flat surface, and then this has a bit of a taper to it that matches the taper on this aluminum casting. So let's, uh, let's go model this up. All right, the PLA one is done, and I think it came out uh, pretty nice. Did have a little bit of crap on my bed that stuck to it. Uh, looks like some black PLA, um, but uh, came out real smooth. Uh, I have not tried it on here yet. Uh, there's some crap on this un underneath here. I want to clean this up first uh, so that this seats all the way down on there. All right, that looks pretty good. Oh, 
Oh, that looks, uh, that's just about perfect. It looks like we might have the tiniest gap here, which is probably good because we really want the majority of the force uh, to transfer um, from the front uh, to this face back here and onto that face of the hammer. So, yeah, that, uh, I don't know if you guys can see that, there's like a, maybe a couple of thou gap. I can't get my fingernail in there, but uh, yeah, probably about five thou, I'd say, is a gap there. So, uh, I did not design this with threads in the, uh, in the print. I found, unless you're doing really big threads, it's better to just go ahead and give yourself uh, a couple of walls to work with. I think I did, uh, like I did three walls on this. I might have done four. Yeah, I checked. I did four walls on this. So that should give us um, almost two millimeters of thickness here to thread into. Uh, went through my box of stuff. Uh, I've actually got two taps in the right size, which is great because one is a standard tap and the other one is a bottoming tap. Um, and I didn't make this hole super deep as I didn't want to get anywhere near this front face. So we'll start with the, uh, so the difference is a standard tap has a nice taper going in here to get centered on the material, but won't cut the threads all the way down to the bottom. Whereas the bottoming tap, you can't really start uh, threading a hole with a bottoming tap uh, but once you've got the, the majority of it already threaded, you can switch out uh, to this guy and you'll get almost all the way to the bottom. We'll get within probably two and a half millimeters of the bottom of the hole with, uh, with full threads. So let's, uh, let's try cutting this in here. And you know, now that I'm thinking about it, this is going to be a challenge with the TPU. I have threaded PLA before. I've never threaded TPU. I'm not sure it's even going to cut. It might just flex. I guess we'll see. All right, I've got my tap set up in a ratcheting tap handle. Let's see if I can just hold on to this guy uh, to tap this. I might need to get the vise and put it in the vise. Seems like it's tapping pretty good. Worth noting, the uh, I made I looked up the uh, the drill uh, size for this tap, um, and I made the hole uh, in the PLA that size. So. We should be getting a nice clean set of threads here. If you guys can see that, it does look good. So let's switch over to the bottoming tap and get all the way to the bottom. All right, I think we're pretty much to the bottom of that hole. So let's see if we can thread our carriage bolt into here. Oh yeah, that thread's in really nice. Perfect, okay, so now what we need to do is basically figure out how much thread uh, we need at the end here. We can, we can measure this one and uh, go ahead and just cut this carriage bolt off um, at the right length. So let me get the calipers, we'll figure out how much we need exposed and then maybe we'll put just a piece of blue tape on this guy to mark the spot to cut. All right, 9.19, so we'll go, we'll go nine millimeters. So I'll put this blue tape on here. And then what I can do is now I can unthread this. And we'll go over to the bandsaw and we'll make a cut right there at our blue tape. All right, so I'm over at the metal cutting bandsaw and I wanna show you guys a little trick that I picked up. Um, when you're cutting something like this on the bandsaw, it can be really difficult to hold it straight because what happens is we've got a big old head up here um, and then this guy is lower down here. So if we hold it like this, we're gonna end up with a crooked cut. Um, and it's also probably gonna try and spin on us, particularly since this is a carriage bolt and it's just a round surface here. So this will spin real easy. Um, it can be very difficult to hold onto. Uh, what you can do is uh, take a little machinist vise or if you're cutting something bigger, a, a larger vise, um, with a V-block or if you have a vise that has a V-block uh, built in like this guy and clamp what you want to cut in that little vise and now you have the nice flat bottom of the vise uh, to keep against the, the bandsaw table and you've got this whole thing to feed in to the blade and it's not going to spin because we've got it clamped in there. Alright, 
And there's the piece that we need. Uh, we could go clean this up on the grinder just to get that edge dressed up and uh, let's give it a try. All right, so let's thread one end into our PLA hammer face. See how much we ended up with. Eight point seven six, so that should be just right. And see, that's the side we cleaned up. Oh yeah, that fits nice. Snugged up in there real nice. Uh, I think that's going to work well. Uh, now what we got to do is wait for the TPU side to finish. All right, TPU side is done. So I guess let's uh, let's clean up this other face of this hammer and uh, see how it fits. All right, fit looks decent. I think this this uh, this face here must not be quite as inset as this one because we've got a bit of a gap there, more so than we did on the other side. Let's uh, let's switch these. Yeah, so now we've got the same gap on this side. So it looks like these two faces just aren't exactly uh, the same, or I should say, yeah, these two, this face and this face. This one seems to be a bit more inset. That's okay. Like I said before, um, really, we're just worried about the majority of the force transferring from this face to this face to this face. So actually having a gap there is probably not a bad thing. So. All right, now the big question, can we tap TPU? So I switch back to a standard tap. I'm not 100% sure it's, cut. yeah, I think it is cutting. I think it's working. Well, I can see, I can see threads in there, um, but they don't look like they're cut to the full depth. Let's switch over to the bottoming tap. Yeah, so I don't think this is threading anywhere near as nice as the PLA. I'm not actually sure it's cutting it at all. Um, I had hoped with the bottoming tap, uh, since we have the full thread faster, that I wouldn't have time to kind of flex and get out of the way. Yeah, there's threads cut there, but they are, it's just a bit deeper than a scratch in the surface. Let me try running it in there again. Yeah, that, that, that did actually cut a bit deeper. Let me blow that out with the air compressor. All right, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, they're definitely not cut to full depth. It's hard to see because this is black. The camera just has a hard time picking it up. Um, but I think it's cut enough that it'll hang on to it. So let's give it a try. All right, that was super hard to turn in there. So I've got two nuts on, on here just locked against each other to uh, give me a bit more purchase. Let's see if I can get this turned in now. Yeah, it looks like it's going. Yeah, that uh, looks pretty good. I actually like that color combination uh, better. Um, I uh, was on the fence about what color to go with for the PLA side, and I really like orange in the shop. So let's, uh, let's find a way to test this. All right, I've got just a piece of two by four here. Let's, uh, let's give it a solid whack with each side and uh, see if it holds up. All right, so both sides held up. Uh, just fine, and I hit that real hard. That was a full swing uh, on each side, and the PLA side uh, is quite tough. Uh, we put a half moon shape in the in the two by four here with that side. 
I'm curious to see what happens with the TPU side if we hit it uh, at an angle like this. Uh, let me try and get one of those. All right, well, I'm calling that a success, and I think we're really just scratching the surface here. Obviously, I could vary the, you know, the material that I was using to print these, and I can certainly vary the amount of infill uh, as well. I did a pretty dense infill on the PLA, I think 70%, uh, and I did uh, two millimeters of solid layers first, just to make sure that if I was hitting something smaller, uh, that this guy wasn't going to break through uh, to that infill. Uh, this set I did pretty soft, and honestly, I think I could go softer. I'm, I'm curious to see that high-speed footage to see if I can see this guy deforming at all on impact, but I think I might try going softer on this side, or maybe even a different durometer uh, TPU that is uh, that has more give to it. Um, I can, yeah, see, I can, I can flex it here more on the side than I can on the tip. I did, uh, I think, uh, 10 layers, 10 solid layers on the end here. So I might be able to go maybe less solid layers on the face, uh, but less infill for the first maybe 10 millimeters, and then more infill on that back face uh, where it threads into. Actually, you know what? Let's unthread these and see if we have any damage. Nope, that looks, uh, I don't think those threads moved. That looks good. And I mean, I wouldn't expect to see any damage on the the TPU side. This is really tough stuff. The PLA is much more brittle and hard, but that's kind of the properties that I wanted for this face. I wanted this to, to give a good solid blow, but not mar anything uh, metal or harder wood uh, that I'm hitting. Yeah, no damage at all. And I was not gentle with this thing. So let me know down in the comments uh, what other materials might be worth trying for this or what mods I might try uh, to get even different faces for this. I don't think I'd want to go any bigger. I think I want to stay at the same diameter as the head just so we're transferring all those forces into this aluminum piece um, versus having like a twisting force on the end. But I'm really happy with how that turned out. I'm probably going to print a couple more just to have as backups and definitely on the TPU side uh, to see if I can get one that is an even softer blow. So guys, thanks for hanging out with me in the shop today. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Let's me know what you guys actually like to see. And if this is your first time on the channel, I do a new video like this once a week, every single Friday. So if you're into that, consider hitting that subscribe button. And guys, if you do, I will see you next Friday. <music>